All right, so I've had a few comments of people wanting to know what I'm packing. Here you go. This will explain. Just wanted to make a quick video about the building process that went into building the uh, micro camper that I'm walking around the country with. Um, it's worth noting that it's based very heavily on a, a design by an American guy called Paul Elkins, which I'll link the video that I saw his rig first. Um, the main difference is that he was doing it as a bike camper and I wanted to make it something that a human could walk and pull. So most of the modifications were either sort of cosmetic, like there's a few changes to the interior, um, or changes because of the way that it's being pulled and for the length of time that it's being planned to be pulled. So I'll explain all that as we go and I hope you enjoy. If you've got any questions feel free to either email me, contact details are at the end, or you can um, leave a comment on this video. Cheers. Right, so this is where it all started. Um, working with core flute for most of the project. So that's a type of fluted plastic, which is two layers of plastic with um, kind of a corrugation in between. So this was just starting getting used to it and learning how to work with the material as well as cutting uh, curves, which was difficult because it's easy to get caught into the different flutes. Um, yeah, so that's what this first stage was. And I also made an outline of the particular curve that I needed to use to make the pie pattern to make the cone front shape. Right, so Mr. Elkin's design actually called for making the shell first. I was wanting to do the base a little bit differently than he did because of the types of stresses it was going to take. Um, I decided to use plywood, so I decided to make the base first so I could make sure that the shell was going to fit around it and it was going to all work because the attachment that he used for the base was using zip ties which wasn't going to work for my base. So this is what this is. This was making um, the framework and there's the wheels sitting there and we hadn't decided where to put the cross bracing yet. So that brings us to the next stage which was putting in the plywood so we had to cut that out. Um, so we had to work out where the cross bracing was going before I cut out the wheel holes and the plywood and as you see here, um, I've painted some of it first because I wanted to make sure that it was all waterproof right through the seal, right through the joins. And, um, and then we we're going to attach the cross bracing once it was all worked out. Now at this point we wanted to try and work out what shape the front was going to be, so we had to make the shell. Shell was cut out um, as per the pattern and it worked fine. So we marked that down on the plywood from the inside with someone holding it as you can see there. Um, yep. Here you can see the front of the cone knot pushed together and you can see it sticks up kind of like a crown and obviously the back of the shell has also been there. Now you can't really see it very well from this angle but there's um, a doubling over to make the awning and make it also still attached and waterproof. I think you'll see it better in the next photo. And again this is just the same same state really, it's just from a different angle and you can see there the back's folded over and there's kind of like a curved awning and again that's just pretty much straight from the pattern and we just started looking at putting in the back wall as well so you can see that's where the door goes. Now if I was building that in one place I would have attached it at that point and would have made things a lot easier later but as I had to make it to move I made it in pieces, I made the base and I made the two shell sections separate here you can see the base and I'm trying to work out how to attach the stands which actually had to be modified to make it the right height so I had to work that out and you'll see that in the next photo. So here you can see I've um, tipped it upside down and I've just got the stands resting under there. That's not because I'm placing them there, it's just for convenience. This was adding the brackets for the wheels so I was trying to work out exactly the alignment I wanted to make sure that they would um, run straight. And yeah, that's what we did. We changed the brackets a little from the design and used angle iron instead of what he was using, which I believe was some sort of electrical circuit board and he was shaping it. Uh, we thought it would be stronger to do it this way rather than uh, making it rest on just the screws or bolts. This way it was resting on solid angle iron. So here we are the right way up. Um, looks like we've got the wheels properly attached at this point. Um, you can also see at the front, if you look carefully, there's some sort of half width um, framing 
and that's just for the nose section so in the original design again with the core flute it was all attached using flip down tabs on the core flute I had to work out a different way to do that because of the use of plywood so I had to have an attachment point for those front um, panels and that's what I devised I decided I didn't really need the full framing um, so I split it in half and used half size so that's just where it's screwed in at those front points okay so at this stage we've moved we're moving into assembly mode now instead of making the kit set so it's actually putting it all together and you can see all the zip ties used to put the cone sections together and that was actually really hard to make it fit properly it took a lot of trimming um, I guess you've got to be very careful with how you cut those pie sections and make sure they line up properly to make this easier there's the back wall aka the front door so um, it's actually it is a really clever design I like this he designed it so it's a double thickness and the reason for that is he wanted to put some things in between namely a perspex window and a mosquito netting at the three ventilation holes so that's what all the zip ties are doing there it's holding two sheets of core flute together to have a gap in between um, which also acts as you know, a minor insulation layer this is another pretty clever innovation he took um, a bucket top and with the lid as well and cut a bit of, out of the lid and put perspex over the top and riveted the perspex in uh, that was pretty clever I thought and he I think just used silicone to put it in I decided to put a rubber seal in between as well kind of a gasket just as an extra, extra layer of um, waterproofing I suppose and this is the first photo you really see the, the printing which was done so that was done by one of my sponsors it was kind enough to do it all for free which was fantastic he did the artwork and the vehicle wrap I'm just looking at putting the back wall in place at this point this is one of my few original ideas um, I had a off cut of wood and decided to make a little a window knob out of it so I took a couple of pieces of the 2x1 and blocked them together with some glue and then shaped it out with a grinder to make a little knob which I also then added some veneer to to make just a little design if you look carefully later on at the window you'll see it but it's not on yet all right so there's two main things going on here there's brakes and there's handlebars the handlebars you can see they were just out of an old i think like hammock set or something and we cut the bar in half and cut the center out of it um, you can see the actual shape of the bar better on the other bar they're attached at the front with a steel tab and at the back with a plywood um, kind of like a backstop type thing to stop it pulling back and they're also bolted through the actual frame itself and you can see the brakes are standard, the old school caliper brakes. So that's pretty much once the brakes and the bars are attached. And you can see how that sort of fits together. And it's a better view of what the actual rig looks like with the vehicle wrap. If, at the back there too, you can see the other part of the handlebar, the white thing there. That's the front part. Okay, so this is sort of a funny story, I suppose. I, can't, I ran out of spray paint. And... Um, uh, I decided I was going to cover up the parts that I missed and I asked for my niece to give me a hand doing some painting so um, the funny part about it is we ended up not painting the parts where the spray paint was missed we ended up just painting the other bits but I like what turned out it was quite cool um, some of it's been kind of rubbed off now but you, yeah the idea is still there and I really like that uh, my niece got to be part of the project quick view of the back with the reflectors in place and also you can see there's a sort of a, a screen for the back window it's more for privacy than anything else as well as insulation so at this stage you can see the insulation's gone in and with that also the wheel arches are in place um, haven't done any of the cabinetry or any of the things up the front there um, the tape in the shape of an umbrella up the front was really just an afterthought because of the way that it looked when I taped down the seams of the pie pattern uh, it just really needed the little curves of the umbrella so I thought yeah why not finish it off with tape this photo I think all of it might be done so I think really it was just a bit painting from here we've got the upper cabinets we've got the interior light in there you can see and we've also got some of the 
the framing for the side parts behind the wheel wells as well, which are really storage for food and water. And this is looking back from the front, and you can see this is on, if I'm lying down, this is on my left hand side. This is where the, the electrics is, there's a battery in there, and you can see a little fan, which is intended to be there in case it does get too hot, because I might have to leave the dogs in there sometimes. So that's really for their welfare more than anything else. Uh, make sure I've got some way to circulate the air. Turns out though, it actually doesn't get too hot. With the excellent insulation we've got, it really remains cooler than it is outside or warmer if it's cold. So it's really good. And this is the door. So this is your point where you can see the actual knob. And you see I've made a little yin yang out of the, um, the veneers that I put on. And it's the inside view of that um, window cover too. Okay, so this is looking back again at the left hand side if I was lying down. There's a couple of things here. You can see the heat shield for the cooker in the corner. There's a vent cover, which I've never used because um, it would be impractical. It would stop off all the air circulation. So maybe for the privacy, I might use it. And there's also a cover for the skylight on the very left hand side there. This is the other side, so you can see a few things here. There's a bread pan, which I use as sort of a wet area if I want to do washing or have a shave or whatever. We've got a hook hanging up there for some towels and things. The drawer in the middle, cabinet up the top, and you can see on the other end there's um, kind of a... It's a, just a storage compartment with a, a door that opens both ways. There's a rubbish bin in there and also like a little storage shelf. Again, it's just a view down the guts, and it looks like everything's pretty much in place, and I started packing in the, the gear that I'm going to actually carry with me. main point of this photo, I think, is to show the joint of the um, handlebars, as well as the little electrical outlet on the side. That's where I connect solar panels to actually feed into the electrics in the front. More on the handlebars here. So you can see, if you look right back at the join, there's a bit of green. That's a piece of hose, which actually acts like a, like a, almost like an emergency brake, but also uh, just a place for it to rest down on the handlebars. There's a bell, there's bar tape around the front, and you can see the brakes attached. There's a light on the front there, and you can also see that there's the webbing that I use as a shoulder strap. It's actually from a... Um, Kiwi fruit picking basket and it just holds up the bar there and takes most of the weight so I can just push rather than holding it up. And here's the rear. You can see there's another light on the back there. Done a bit of painting. It's made everything look nice. Uh, it's really just a, a view of the finished product, I suppose. Boom, and there you have it. That's everything. It's that's me packed in. Um, looks all nice and tidy. Doesn't look like that most of the time nowadays. But uh, that's what it looked like first time when I packed it in and I hadn't quite put food in, but everything else was in. So this is my house for now. So here we are, We're just uh, taking a bit of a breather after our first road test up a big hill. Um, it's pretty tough. <laughs> I was sucking and blowing pretty hard, but um, got up there and it's, it's shown that it'll do the job. A couple of days in now, it certainly does do the job and we get to walk through this sort of terrain and live in this